Rhymes of double trouble and cauldron bubble are how many think of witches on Halloween. But this book is a little more serious. Malleus Maleficarum, also known as the Hammer of Witches. John Ott is a professor of medieval European history at Portland State University. He helped guide a student practicum studying this book published in 1490. One of the more famous and better known witch hunting manuals. Text, illustrations, and handwritten notes in the margins of the Malleus Maleficarum detail how to spot witches and ways to persecute them without falling under their spells. It really brought to life for me different things that I had learned in other classes. Sarah Alderson just completed her master's degree in history at PSU and took this course. You can kind of learn about the mistakes that people made in the past. And to Talk about big mistakes. People following this book's example went after so-called witches when crops wouldn't grow or the weather was bad. Many also thought witches had the power to control if someone lived or died. This sounds like old-fashioned cancel culture to me. <laughs> yeah, that, <laughs> that's an interesting analogy, all this, although in this case, the cancellation is sort of permanent. And this was a, a period of, of about two centuries in which anywhere from 40 to 60,000 people, mostly women, were put to death. Women were thought to be stronger in faith than men, but also somehow more susceptible to being seduced by the devil and witchcraft. <laughs> so as the witching hour approaches, the big question for all of us now, what are the parallels or maybe lessons learned for today? The power of, of systems, legal systems, systems of thought, believed to be so intellectually ironclad that they justify and perpetuate their own kinds of ways of seeing the world to the exclusion of other viewpoints. A lesson to suspend judgment and maintain some healthy skepticism. In Portland, I'm Galen Etlin for KGW News.